God speaks through calamities. Today, we're given an opportunity to know the Lord in the midst of these trials. Indeed, God works even in the strangest things, and He proves to be personal in teaching us the principles of His kingdom. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I'm Riza Tilohani, a solo parent. I'm a travel professional, but because of the pandemic, I am now jobless. My two travel-based businesses have been prematurely closed. Heartbreaking stories of some of my global colleagues continue. I remember one saying, I don't know how I will survive since our company has imposed a no work, no pay policy. I also heard a story from a friend who is into bed space business that one of her boarders who lives on a daily pay basis has not eaten for days. Like many of you, I'm also locked up at home, waiting for the restart of a new life after the outbreak. I strive hard to be free from the virus, but because I'm the only one driving in the family, I took the initiative to be the family's legman for errands. This is just one physical work that I'm required to do, among many. Management of our finances is another challenge that I will soon face. The situation leads me to ask the question, what is this teaching me? What is this teaching my whole household? Lockdown has tremendous effect in our lives, and a lot of our ways have been changed. I have started my year with a plan for my personal life, my family life, my career life, and ministries that I want to be involved in. One example of my plan is how frequent I will be in the gym because physical care is also an important part of our lives. My goal is that I will move towards the direction of growth or increase. I want to grow in areas of personal, professional, financial, and more importantly, spiritual. These are good objectives, right? I believe that when my goal is achieved, I will be a better provider and better things can be acquired and enjoyed. But the lockdown forced me to do some rearranging and revisiting of plans, suggesting that my focus must be on what matters most. Today, I will talk about our being a provider to our family, which is our God-given responsibility. This responsibility is directly affected by the pandemic. Fear of not being able to fulfill it is a very imminent reality. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. God gave generously. He did not just desire to give anything, but He knows exactly what we needed all the time. In many occasions, the Lord has shown us how to give. He taught us to give back in tithes and offerings and to others as well. To be particular, Genesis says that God gave us the earth. In Exodus, He gave Himself in the form of a pillar of cloud and fire. And ultimately in John, we were told that God gave us His Son. In our time, God provided everything that we possess, our jobs, our businesses, our homes, our families, and even wisdom on how to live our lives. But what happens when the Lord changed the course of our life and everything that we possess were suddenly gone or decreasing? What happens to the family the Lord has entrusted into our hands to protect and provide? How does the lockdown affect your faith in the Lord being the God who provides? Many have lost their jobs. Many businesses have closed its operations. There was no trade at least for the non-essentials. Sale of some products and commodities is temporarily stopped. In this lockdown, while God says He cares for us, does it mean He doesn't care about our livelihood? Can God contradict Himself? Truth is, God provides us with our livelihood in order for us to be blessed and be a blessing to our family. 
Today, we face a challenge on how to be stewards, teachers, and encouragers to our own family and others. The blessings that we received from the Lord in the form of our jobs and businesses were able to send our children to school, have a vacation locally or abroad. We bought our children clothes, served them food, and update them with gadgets. There was probably plenty. Unknowingly, we have created a world where our children were sheltered, but suddenly, the plenty has become few, little, and scarce. We are now asked how to tell the children what matters, how we are to handle their requests when our answer is a clear no because the request is not a priority, and how we are to look at the situation we are in in God's perspective. Brothers and sisters, our faith is under the microscope. Our children are looking at us through the lens. The Apostle Paul taught us in his letter to the Philippians in chapter 4 verses 12 to 13 that says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. Have we shown our children how to be content? Have we taught them how to adjust in the present and future situations? How? We can learn from the Apostle Paul. He said regardless of the situation, he knew how to be full of peace and full of thanksgiving because of a secret. And we can go straight to the conclusion that the secret that he was saying is having a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Applying the practical lesson of the Apostle Paul, we are to consider the following. Paul stated that he knew the difference between want and need, or the difference between hunger and plenty. Acknowledge the real situation to your children. Number two, teach your children that the secret of being content is knowing Jesus. Thus, thanksgiving and peace is experienced. And finally, we declare that we can overcome these challenges through Jesus who gives us the strength we will need until the crisis is over. This is hope. Parents, we have the role to perform in our children in this lockdown. Let us be the men and women of faith for this generation. Let us be encouraged by His promise in Psalm chapter 27, verse 13. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Let me close by sharing to you a story about a tomato. At a seminar with the title, The Economics of Abundance, led by Peter Block and Olivia Saunders, after they gave out a bit of biographical material and a history of the Bahamas independence in 1980, Olivia Saunders held up a tomato and asked this question, How many seeds are in this tomato? The group broke into small group and tried to solve the problem. Each group had many different ways of calculating the answer. Some tried to do it visually, recreating what they thought an inside of a tomato, watering it, and then estimating the seeds in each section. The answer differ. After just waiting long enough, Olivia Saunders gave the answer. And the answer is, there are enough. Enough for me to save to plant for next year. Enough for me to give to my neighbors so they too can have tomatoes and the next year they will save seeds and give seeds to others just as i will again share my seeds the story reminds us of the similar seed that the lord planted in our hearts and it is the seed of his love through jesus just like a single piece of tomato that has seeds enough to use to share and to multiply in the future. 
That is how the Lord wants us to have in our personal, professional, and spiritual life. We all have to trust the Lord for the growth of that single seed. And from a single seed come multitude of seeds to scatter not just to our own family but for others as well. With this, I would like to thank all of you for your time. God bless everyone.